thousands and thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Guru Dev, Asvatiya Paramarata Thuma, Guru Pada Padama, Nitya Lila Pravishth Om Vishnu Pada, Ashtotara Satasri, Rupanuga Acharya Varya, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Pratyan Keshu Goswami Maharaj, to his Sanyas disciple also, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, to Param Pujapad Srila Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Goswami Maharaj, to Param Pujapad Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj, to Param Pujapad Srila Bhakti Rakshak Shida Dev Goswami Maharaj, to all the Nitya Sat Parshita Brinda, eternal associates of Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur and to our entire Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to Parampujapad Sri Bhakti Alok Parvadvaiti Goswami Maharaj. Gaur Premanandi! To Pujapad Sri Bhaktivinath Yati Maharaj and to all these old Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas, Vancha Kalpa to the Vaishnavas, 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 
by the causes mercy of Sri Guru and Goranga, and especially the causes mercy of Lord Vaman Dev and Srila Jiva Goswami. Today we had the great fortune to serve in the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, distributing Sri Prem Nam Sankirtan to millions of people in the center of historical Berlin. Now we have returned to the lotus feet of C.C. Radhagovinda to hear the glories of Srila Jeeva Goswami Pada and Sri Vaman Dev. It's very important. Ishwarya Janma Titi Jehino Pavitra Sai Mata Vaishnavera Titi Charitra. Just as the appearance day of Krishna is glorious and pure, so the appearance days of the Vaishnavas also glorious and pure. They must be honored. If there is not a feast, that means a feast of hearing about their transcendental qualities and life history, then it will become a Vaishnava Aparad. So it's very important to honor all the important appearance and disappearance days of our great Acharyas. And today is also the auspicious day of Sri Vama and Maha Dwadasi. So, first of all, we'll offer our son, the Pushpanjali, at the lotus feet of Lord Vamandev, and afterwards we'll try to look in the direction of the unlimited glories of Srila Jiva Goswami. Perhaps you know that in the family of demons, Hiranyakashipu, he had a son who was actually a great Mahabhagavad Vaishnava. Prahlad Maharaj. But the son of Prahlad Maharaj was Virochan. And Virochan was a demon. But the son of Virochan was Bali Maharaj. And he was a devotee. So in this way, we cannot put so much faith in a DNA parampara. A parampara which is only a family line. Because you'll see, one generation is a demon, one generation is a devotee, and then a demon, then a devotee. Hmm. So, Bali Maharaj, he was engaged in a battle with the demigods and he was killed. Bali Maharaj died, he was killed in the battle. But, his, the uh, guru of the demons named Shukra Acharya he knew some mantras and tantra to revive the dead and he brought Bali Maharaj back to life. So when Bali Maharaj was brought back to life by Shukracharya, then Bali Maharaj accepted Shukracharya as his guru and took shelter of him and his teaching. So, by worshipping Shukracharya, who is a great Brahmin, he became very powerful. And by the power of this, he amassed a huge army and he stormed the gates of heaven, Swargalok, the planet of Indra. So at that time, Brigu Muni told Indra, you can, he's too powerful. He has been worshipping the Brahmanas and by worshipping the Brahmanas one gets so much power. You cannot defeat him. So it's better that you just vacate heaven and become a refugee. So Indra and all of his associates, they vacated heaven and became refugees. And Bali Maharaj and his demonic army, they took over heaven. So at that time, Kasyapa Rishi, he had been doing austerities. And after doing austerities in the forest for a long time, he came back to his ashram. And when he came back to his ashram, he saw his wife was there crying, Go! Oh, alas, alas! He has two wives, Diti and Aditi. So Diti is the mother of the uh, demonic race, and Aditi is the mother of the uh, devotees. So Aditi was crying. And he said, Why are you crying? He said, Because my son Indra and all the devotees, They've been driven out of heaven 
they have lost their home and their opulence and they have become without shelter anywhere. When Kasyapa Rishi saw this, he was astonished. He said, just see the power of Maya. Hmm? Why? Because this relation, oh, I am the son of this person, I am the daughter of this person, I am the husband of this person, I am the wife of this person, I am the brother of this person, I am the sister of this person. All these relationships, they're all Maya, all illusion. Hmm? Who is your mother? Who is your father? Hmm? Soul is eternal. And soul has one relationship. Jivera Swarupa Hoy Krishna Nitya Das. Our relationship is with Krishna eternally. So because Nkasya Parishi was absorbed uh, in his the bhajan previously and free from Maya, when he saw her, he was surprised. Look what happens when you go in Maya illusion, then you think you have a sambandha with this material world and always lamenting, lamenting. This is so wrong, this is so bad. Dwaiti Bhattar Bhattar Gyan Sabha Mano Dharma A Bala A Manda A Sabha Brahma Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that mm, to think that this is good and this is bad, the dualities of this material world, this is Mano Dharma, the religion of the material mind. Mm. It is all a mistake. But still, his wife was very insistent. Please do something. Help. How can I help my children? So then, Kasyaparishi said, the only person who can help you is your real husband. His meaning is, I am not really your husband. Who is your husband? Bhagavan. Everyone is related only with God. So he told her, you should do a vrat called Pavyo vrat for 12 days, only living on milk. And you should rise early in the morning, take bath, and you should do puja every day to the Supreme Lord, Narayan, and he can help you. So she followed this brat very, very strictly. And when she completed the brat, then Supreme Lord in a four-handed form appeared before her, and then he disappeared and entered into the heart of Kasyapa. And then from Kasyapa Muni, he was transferred to the womb of Aditi. And then on this day, Vaman Dwadesi, millions and millions of years ago in the Sati Yuga, <laughs> Lord Vaman Deva appeared. Lord Vaman Deva Ki Jai! He appeared in a four armed Narayan form, tall, with a disc club, conch, and lotus flower, with a crown and costume for money, all the ornaments of the Supreme Lord. But then, he, just as an actor on a stage, can play different roles. Just by changing his bhav, he changed his group. So there and then, the forearm form of Narayan became a very small and beautiful dwarf Brahmin boy. All the devotees came and worshipped him, giving him various um, paraphernalia of a brahmachari. Lord Brahma gave him a water pot, another person gave him a deer skin, another person gave an umbrella, a parasol, and now he was beautifully uh, present before everyone as the dwarf Brahmin avatar, Lord Brahma. So then, Lord Vamandev, he heard that at the moment, to get more power, Bali Maharaj was doing a very big Ashwamedha Yagya, whole sacrifice. So the Supreme Lord set off in the form of this Brahmin boy. And he entered into the Yagya arena of Bali Maharaj. So Bali Maharaj was very famous for giving charity. Hmm? And he honored Lord Vamandev and told him, please request from me whatever you want. I can give you gold, I can give you jewels, I can give you uh, a Brahmin wife, I can give you so many wives, I can give you so many villages even. Ask from me. Anyone who asks from me should be satisfied for their whole life just by asking once. So then Lord Vamandev said, 
Please give me only three paces of land by the measurement of my own steps. Hmm? Bali Maharaj said, what you have said is very commendable, but uh, I am the emperor of the universe. You should not ask for such a small and insignificant thing from me. You should ask in such a way that for your whole life you will never be in want of anything. Lord Vamandev said, Oh, Bali Maharaj, a person who is self-controlled is satisfied with whatever comes to them automatically in their life. They don't need more than that. What comes automatically by uh, fate, by his karma, he's satisfied with that. He does not want more. On the other hand, a person whose mind is not self-controlled, whose senses are not controlled, who is not Atmara himself satisfied, he cannot be satisfied even if he were to be given all the sense objects in the entire universe, he would still not be satisfied. So this satisfaction, this is the true nature of the Brahmanas. So then, Lord Vamandev said, you should do Achaman. Do Achaman three times, Om Keshavaya Nama, Om Narayana Nama, Om Madhavaya Nama. Before you make a promise, you have to do Achaman. Just like before we remember our Diksha Mantras, Gajri Mantras in the morning, noon and evening, you should sit down and do Achaman first, because you are promising to swaha, surrender at the lotus feet of your Ishta Dev. Hmm? So Lord Vamandev said, do Achaman three times and promise you that you give me three steps of land. So, <coughs> Bali Maharaj was just about to do that, when suddenly his guru Shukracharya came. He said, don't do it. Don't promise. He said, but I have already told him I would give three steps of land. Shukracharya said, no, no, no. You have to understand the essence of the scriptures. The scriptures say that your words are only binding if you say Om first and then you speak. But because you did not say Om first, then you can go back on your words and it will not be a lie. Bali Maharaj, I cannot accept this conclusion. Shankaracharya said, look, I know that you want to be truthful, but you have to understand that according to the scriptures, truthfulness cannot become fully perfect without a touch of untruth. <laughs> This is the guru of the demons. <laughs> Truthfulness can never be fully perfected without just a little pinch of untruth. <laughs> For example, in the scriptures it is said, when it is bona fide to not tell the truth. Number one, when you are flattering a woman. <laughs> oh, do you like my new hairstyle? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> This is the first time you can tell a lie, according to Shukacharya in Shinagata. The second time is at a wedding ceremony. If you are the best man at the wedding ceremony and you have to give a speech glorifying the bridegroom, you can tell a lie then. That's also acceptable. Another situation is if a cow or a brahmana are in danger. Hmm? If a cow or a brown is running away, then you see a madman coming with an axe. And they say, which way did that cow go? Huh? So the cow, went that way, the cow went that way. So it's a lie, but you can do it. And in this way, the truth only becomes perfected by a little bit of untruth. <laughs> Bali Maharaj was not convinced <laughs> by these arguments of his guru. Hmm? So then, Shukracharya said, Look, this is not a Brahmin dwarf. This is Lord Vishnu himself. He has come on behalf of the demigods, your, the devatas, your enemies. And he's come here to steal away everything from you. Hmm? So don't agree, don't take the achaman and make this vow. So then Bali Maharaj, being the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj, 
by the association of his not his father who was a demon, but by the association of his grandfather, he become a great devotee. And he thought, what is the most important thing? The perfection of all duties for all persons, whether they are brahmacharis, grihasta, vanaprastha, sannyas, whether they are brahmanas, katriya, vaishas, or sutra, is simply sansiddhi haritoshanam, to satisfy the Supreme Lord. So if, the, if this is actually the Supreme Lord, and he wants to give me three, he wants me to give him three steps, and he'll be satisfied by that, then this is the perfection. This is what we should do. Chajo Preet Pralada Bibishana Bhatra Bharat Mahatahari Guru Bali Chajo Kanta Prajabanita Bhaya Jagamangal Kai In Ramcharit Manas, there, Sri Tosidas Goswami, he's saying that the Supreme Dharma is to surrender to the to Sri Krishna. Even if it means going against the material dharmas of this world. So what is the the example? Chajo Pita Pralada Bibishana Bhando Bharamahatari. Pralada Maharaj rejected the order of his father Hiranyakashipu to give up Sravanam Kirtanam Vishnu's mind. Hearing, chanting and remembering about Krishna. Chajo Pita Pralada Chajo Pita Pralada Bibishana Bibishan gave up his brother Ravan for the sake of Lord Ram. Bharat Mahatari, Bharat, the brother of Lord Ram, rejected his mother Kaikeyi because she had mm, ostensibly uh, demanded that Lord Ram not be coronated but go to the forest mm, in exile. Guru Bali Chajo, Bali Maharaj, rejected his guru even. Mm, all Shastra said, never, never, never reject your guru. But if a person has such a guru who is not a Shuddha Vaishnava, who is going against Krishna and giving teachings against Krishna, then disciples should reject that guru. Hmm? Because guru should be Sakshat Haritvaina Samasta Shastra, direct representation of Krishna. How can the Sadhu Guru give an instruction which is against the instructions of Krishna? In Gita, Krishna said, Sarva Dharmam Prachadya. Mame kam shanam praja. Abandon all dharma and just surrender to me. And now Shukrachari is telling Bali Maharaj, don't surrender to God. <laughs> so Bali Maharaj rejected his guru, Shukracharya, and also Kant Brajabanita Bhayajakamangalakari. All scriptures say a wife should serve and follow the husband. Mm. But gopis have rejected their husbands to serve Sri Krishna. Mm. And, by Ajagamangaraka, and by all these acts of devotion, which transgress mundane dharma, but embody the Sanatan dharma, Jaiva dharma, Prema dharma, Bhagavat dharma, the transcendental dharma of the soul, that is Krishna pray, love for God. So, Mm. Bali Maharaj rejected the order of his guru. Then his guru was desperate. Bali Maharaj picked up the uh, Achaman cup which had a spout and he poured a drop of water into his hand. Om Keshavaya Namaha. He poured another drop of water into his hand. Om Narayanaya Namaha. And he went to pour the next drop of water into his hand. And then Shukracharya, who has all cities, mystic powers. By his mystic power, he turned himself into a fly. <laughs> he was flying around. <laughs> and to stop Bali Maharaj from being able to do the Achamana the third time, he flew, the fly flew into the spout of the Achamana cup. <laughs> and he was blocking the hole. So Bali Maharaj was trying to pull, but no water came out. So then he asked one servant, oh, please bring me a straw from the broom. So a servant pulled out a straw from the broom and Bali Maharaj took that straw and put it down the spout of the Achma Kappan, like that. And it went straight into the eye of Shukrachari. Mm -hmm. So now Shukrachari only has one eye, he's blinding one eye. 
That means he reads the Shastra, but he sees only the material side, not the spiritual side. He interprets it in a material way, not in a spiritual way. He sees those statements related to karma, but not those statements related to bhakti. So he poked Shukracharya out of the hole, and then he finished. Oh, Mahadavaya Namaha, I promise to give you, I will give three steps of that. As soon as he said this, then Lord Bhaman Dev expanded himself into a huge form. In one step, he took the earth and all the lower planets. In his second step, he took the entire, uh, all the higher planets. So now he had taken the whole universe. And then he said, oh, Bali Maharaj, you said you would give me three steps. <laughs> Where can I keep my third step? Hmm? So then, Bali Maharaj, hmm? seeing that Lord Vamandev had, he did not exactly become big, only he revealed that he himself hmm? is this universe. That is his Virat Roop. Hmm? People say, where is God? The, answer, the, the question is wrong. The real question is, where is not God? Supreme Lord is everywhere, in everything. Already he is covering the whole universe. So Lord Vamandev, by his steps, two steps, he covered the universe. That means that he revealed that he was already everywhere. Everything belongs to him. What will you give to God? Hmm? This the box here, this is not a donation box. This is not a donation box, because you cannot donate to God because nothing belongs to you. <laughs> Only you are thinking this is mine. When you put that money in the donation box, you just give up the ego of a thief. Hmm? That you are stealing from God, and now you say, actually, this is yours. <laughs> and put it in the box. <laughs> so, you cannot give a donation to God, you can only stop being a liar and a thief. Understand? So that's why the uh, box is called the Pranami. Pranami. Pra means Prakrista. In the most excellent way, uh, Nami. Na means liberty, to give up. And me means hankar, ego. In a very excellent way, and giving up my ego, my concept of I and mine related to the body and mind, and mm, I am being blessed by this chance to uh, perform some service. So, then, Lord Vamande said, oh, you, have, you will not give me the place for my third step? He said, no, no, my Lord, you can place your third step on my head. Then, Lord Vamandev put his lotus foot on the head of Bali Maharaj. So, Bali Maharaj became so glorious because all the devatas and all the demons want to speak of them, even all the devatas, they did not get the touch of the lotus feet of the Lord on their head. So, he became so glorious. But then Lord Vamandev, even though Bali Maharaj had surrendered everything to him, he bound him up with snake ropes and said, you have told a lie, and for this lie you have to go down to the lower planets. Mm -hmm. So then, all the demoniac soldiers of uh, Bali Maharaj, they attacked Lord Vamandev to kill him. But Lord Vamandev didn't have to do anything, because his associates from Vaikuntha, like Jai and Vijay, they appeared there and began to slaughter all the demonic soldiers. And they wiped them all out completely. So this is very interesting. Why? Because Jayan Vijay had been cursed by the four Kumaras to, uh, to take birth in the material world in three births. Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu, Bali Maharaj's grandfather. Then later as Kumbhakarna and Ravana. And then again as Shishupal and Dantavakra. So this pastime of Bali Maharaj is in between the first incarnation, Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, and the second incarnation, the Kumbhakarna and the Ravana. So, how can Jai and Vijay come from Vaikuntha suddenly and uh, fight with all the demonic soldiers if they're supposed to be in this world? The truth of the matter is that Jai and Vijay did not fall to this world. They remained always in Vaikuntha so they could come to the aid of Lord Vamandev. 
but they expanded themselves and in their expanded forms they came to this world to give a teaching to everyone of the dangers of Vaishnav Aparad. This is the teaching. This is the most terrible thing. Under no circumstances whatsoever should we ever offend, minimize, criticize any devotee of Krishna. And that's not only, oh, well, he's not a pure devotee. No. Any devotee of Krishna. Even devotee who falls down again and again, Krishna still thinks he's a sadhu. If he's one pointed in my service, Apichat Sudharatro, Pajate Mamanandiva, Sadhu Reva Samantavya Samantavya Ito Hi Saha. Anyone who is serving Krishna, but not serving any Devatas, Kali, Durga, Ganesh and all. But one point to Krishna, Krishna accepts that person as a sadhu. One should be very careful not to offend or minimize them in any way. So, this is why Jain Vijay could appear at that time. So then, Lord Vamandev said, You have to go down. To Nirai. So in Sanskrit, the word Nirai means hell. You have to go to Nirai, hell. But in Sanskrit, the letter R and the letter L are interchangeable with each other. Hmm? So Nirai can also mean Nilai. So Nilai means the abode of the Supreme Lord. So he said, You have to go to Nirai, hell. Meant you have to go to my abode. That means Bali Maharaj will go to Vaikuntha after living for millions of years. Uh, till the end of this universe in the Sutta Lok, one of the lower planets. So even though the Vitalatal, Rasatal, Patal, Sutal, these lower planets are below the earth, by the will of the Supreme Lord, just by his desiring it, Lord Vamande just desired it, and the Sutal planet became the same as Vaikuntha transcendental and superior in all respects to Indra's planet even. So it is, don't think that Lord Vamandev took everything away from Bali Maharaj, took heaven away from him and sent him down to the lower planets. But actually he took away the inferior heaven and gave him a, the superior place because by his wish Sutal became the far superior. So the one may say, well, why is he being punished? Because he gave a place for the third step. So Lord Vamandev said, you have told a lie. What was that lie? The lie was, I will give. This was his lie. I will give. You cannot give. There is nothing which is yours. Everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. Your soul belongs to the Supreme Lord. Only the conception that something is independent, Swatantra Vastu, that there is a Swatantra Vastu, anything independent from God, this idea is Maya. You can give up the absorption in Maya, but you cannot give anything to God. So for this lie saying, I will give, you have to go down to Nirai, means Nilai. <laughs> so then, by the uh, curse, which is really a blessing of Lord Vamandev, then Bali Maharaj went down to the Sutta Planetary Lok with his associates. Shukacharya and the other demons who hadn't been killed were there. And Lord Vamandev said to Shukracharya, Oh, I came here when the Yagya of Bali Maharaj was going on, but now the Yagya of Bali Maharaj has been completely disrupted. So you should chant all the mantras and do all the ceremonies to correct this fault in the Yagya so that the Yagya can be completed. So then Shukracharya, his heart had become softened and Shukracharya said to Lord Vamandev, Mantra tas tantra tas chidram deshakal atavastu taha Sarvam karoti nischidram Hari nam anus ansankirtanam tava Sarvam karoti nischidram Nam asankirtanam tava He said, Oh my Lord, it may be that this yagya has been disrupted and there are many faults in this yagya because of this disruption. However, 
Mantra-tas-tantra-tas-chidram. Whatever fault is there, if someone chants a mantra who does, who does tantra, some ritual, in an incorrect way, if there's any fault, kala desha vastuta, any fault in the ingredients, in the time or the place, then sarvam karoti nischidram. You can remove all of these faults just by one thing. Nama Sankirtanam Tava, just by Hare Nam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So by Hare Nam Sankirtan, everything becomes perfect. So this pastime of Lord Vaman Day is very, very wonderful, very beautiful. Lord Vamandev said to Bali Maharaj, I want to give you a benediction. You can ask from me whatever you want. Now it was the other way around because Bali Maharaj said that to him before. Bali Maharaj said, I want to ask you for one benediction, but you must promise three times. <laughs> so he promised. He said, uh, please become my uh, Dwarpal, the protector of my door. So in Surtal planetary system, in the abode of the Bali Maharaj, Baman Dev became his doorman and protector there. So it looks as if Baman Dev cheated Bali Maharaj, but Bali Maharaj, by his love, captured Lord Baman Dev. And now Lord Baman Dev, he was <coughs> living with him in the Sutta Plantage look. So that means that he's always there with him. Lord Vamandev sometimes, he has appeared in heaven and sometimes he goes there to give his darshan to Aditi and to Indra. But when he comes flying on the back of Garuda, then Indra does puja and then Vamandev flies away. Hmm? And Indra says, oh, Everyone knows that he's my younger brother, but the truth is that when he comes, he can't wait to leave. He does not get out of the car. And if you go to visit someone, but you don't even get out of your car, that means you don't want to see them, right? So he doesn't even get off the back of Guru. That means really he doesn't want to see me. But he's always staying in the abode of Bali Maharaj in, in Sukta Lok. So, one day, Bali Maharaj was in his court and one old lady came there and she was crying. Bali Maharaj said, oh, don't cry. Why are you upset? You are a Brahmin, you are a Brahmin lady. So I'll give you anything you want. You can ask for me anything you want. And then that old Brahmin lady said, will you give me whatever I want? He said, yes. Then that old Brahmin lady said, promise three times. Then Bali Maharaj was thinking, oh, I heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> and then she manifested her form, it was Lakshmi Devi. She said, uh, I want my husband back. <laughs> because Lord Vaman Devi is the husband of Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. So then what can Lord Vaman Devi do? So he expanded himself and in one form he stayed with Bali Maharaj in Sutra Lok and in another form he went back to be with Lakshmi in Vaikuntha. So, now, in this history of Lord Vamandev, there's a very, very practical and important teaching for all of us. Hmm? What is that? You see, Bali Maharaj, he didn't do anything wrong. Hmm? The Lord came, he asked for something, he promised to give it. But still the Lord said, you are a liar, you have gone against Dharma, I am going to tie you up, I will push you down to Mirai, to hell. Hmm? But what did, Lord Vam, uh, what did Bali Maharaj do? He did not do anything wrong, but still the Lord provoked him, tried to provoke him by dealing with him in an unjust way. But at that time, when everything which was unfair, and against Bali Maharaj took place, Bali Maharaj didn't argue. He didn't try to fight back. He didn't try to defend himself mm -hmm. by his deeds or by his words or even by his thoughts. Even when he was tied up with the snake ropes 
Just in his mind he was thinking, Oh my Lord, I bow down to you in my mind because physically I cannot bow down because you just tied me up with snakes. Hmm? So even when he was provoked and he'd done nothing wrong, but still he continued to serve and by this he captured the heart of Bhagavan. Hmm? So you have to be like this in your life. Hmm? Even you, if you do something wrong, you get a punishment. And you may be able to accept it. But if you are doing everything right, but still, Supreme Lord makes problems in your life, one after another. Hmm? Then you should not think, oh, it's not fair. Why is Krishna doing this to me? Hmm? You should think, susamikshamano <laughs> Bunjana eva atma kritam vipakam Ridva vaputpi bidadam namaste Jeevet yogurti padesa dayabak Look, Brahma has said that person who accepts all these sufferings and difficulties of life and thinks it's my own fault, this is the fruit of my own misdeeds. Mm, that is my Atma Kritam Vipakam. It is the Vipak, the maturity of my Atma Krita, my own activities has come back to me. But I deserve much worse than this. But Supreme Lord is so kind, He's giving only a small token reaction of my misdeeds. Mm? You should think if one day you cut your finger, actually you should have cut off your head. But by the mercy of the Lord, only your finger was cut. Mm? So a person who thinks everything, even the difficulties and problems of life, they are Krishna's mercy. Mm? And there's nothing to blame to Him. And with body, mind and words, that person continuously prays, glorifies and bows down to the Supreme Lord. Then, for that person, the lotus feet of Krishna become his inheritance. That means that, let's say you, your father is very wealthy, so all that wealth will come to you. There's nothing more for you to do, it will come to you. It's only a matter of time when the father passes away, now that's your wealth. So in the same way, for a person who has this humble attitude, within the, uh, the chaos, the difficulties, the vicissitudes, the outrageous, mm, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune in this world, then that person who remains calm, never blames God, who always takes the blame on himself and continuously glorifies Krishna, it's only a matter of time before the lotus feet of Krishna become his property. So this is one of the very deep and important teachings for all of us. Never forget this jewel. Lord Baman Dev Ki Jai Sri Baman Mahadwadasi Mahotsava Ki Jai Gaur Premanande Now we come to Srila Jiva Goswami. On this day, in the year 1511, that is one year after Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, when he was 24 years old, accepted, left Navadvip, accepted sannyas and went to Puri. So one year after Mahaprabhu um, accepted sannyas, in the village of Ram Kelly in West Bengal, as the son of Anupam Malik, one very high government minister in the government of the Emperor Nawab Hussein Shah, he had a son, and that son, his name was Jiva. Hmm? Jiva was very lucky to be born as the son of Anupam Malik, because his mm, the uncles, he had two uncles also, his father's brothers, they became famous in the world as Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatan Goswami. So he's the nephew of Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. So, just when he was a little baby, only some years later, when he was about, uh, about five or six years old, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from the Puri made his first attempt to go to Vrindavan. And on that attempt, he came to the village of Ramkeli. 
And Rupan Sanatan and Anupam is also known by his spiritual name Vallabha. They came to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and young Jiva's father came with his child and said, oh, bow down. And he put his head at the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But then, from his childhood, after that, he never saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again directly in that way. But what happened? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told his uncles and father also, you should renounce your government service and come and meet with me in Vrindavan. So Sanatana Goswami was arrested, he was in jail, but Rupa Goswami and Anupam Malik, Vallabha, they quickly gave away their various, their money in charity and they kept some behind for the education of young Jiva so they would have top first class education in Sanskrit grammar, Kavya, poetry, and Sandarshans and so on, and Srimad Bhagavatam. So when they left home, then the young boy Jiva, losing his father and two uncles, he also became overwhelmed with the spirit of Vairagya, detachment from this world. He was like a prince, such a wealthy family, dressed in silk cloths and jewels. But when his father and uncles left home, he gave up the silk cloth, he gave up the jewels and dressed very simply in white cloth like a Vaishnava. Hmm? And he used to have deities of Krishna Balaram and he would worship them every day. And when young Jiva used to bow down to Krishna Balaram, tears would, love would flow from his eyes. He gradually grew to be a young man and he was very learned, very intelligent, expert in Sanskrit grammar and poetics and philosophy. And one night he had a dream. And in that dream he saw the Harinam Sankirtan of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he never physically met Mahaprabhu again. But sometimes in a sporty, in a vision, he would see Mahaprabhu. And when he saw this dream, when Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Acharya, Shiva, Thakur, Gadana Pandit and all their associates in Nam Sankirtan disappeared from his dream, he was feeling great anxiety of separation. He could not stay at home any longer. Already he would not sleep in his comfortable silken bed. He used to sleep on the floor because of his strong spirit of Vairagya. But now even he could not sleep on the floor in the house. And he left alone. And from Ram Kelly he set out and went to Navadipta. There in Navadipta, he arrived at the house of Srivas Thakur. And who happened to be at the house of Srivas Thakur at that time? The young Jiva fell at the feet of Nityananda Prabhu and Nityananda Prabhu placed his lotus feet on his head. Hmm? Jiva was crying and crying. Nityananda Prabhu told him, actually I was staying in Kargaha. Hmm? You know, later Nityananda Prabhu, after his marriage to Janava Thakurani and Vasudha Devi, he went to live in Kardaha. So Nityananda Prabhu said, I have come all the way from Kardaha only to see you. And then Nityananda Prabhu took the young Jiva on the first Navadip Dham Parakrama, the circumambulation of the nine islands of the Navadvip. So that beautiful pastime has been described by Srila Bhakti no Thakur in the very beautiful poem Navadvip Dham Mahatya. And every year we're doing Parakrama of Navadvip through nine islands and following the bath of Jiva Goswami under the guidance of Nityananda Prabhu. So after doing the parakrama of the Navadvip, then Nityananda Prabhu told Jiva, hmm, you have to go now to Vrindavan. Jiva said, oh, I want to stay here hmm, in Navadvip with you eternally. Why do you have to go to Vrindavan? Because Vrindavan in Navadvip are non different. Navadvip is not different from Vrindavan. 
no es diferente de mi país. Chiroda mandala bumi, jeba jani chinta mani, tada hoy braja bumi balas. If someone accepts that the dust of Navadip Dham is the same as the dust of Braj Mandal, then they'll discover that they are already in Braj Mandal. Jiva Goswami said, yes, it's true. But still, there is a great benefit of being in Vrindavan because there, Yamuna Devi, Giriraj Govardhan, Shama Kund, Radha Kund, Seva Kund, Niduvan, Dir Samir, Bangsi Bhatt, all these places are directly manifest and they will be a great Udipana, stimulate your bhav. So I want you to first go from here to Kashi, to Banares. And there you should study Vedanta and Sat Darshan, Vedanta Sutra and six classical philosophies under the guidance of Madhusudan Vachaspati. And then from there you should go to Brindavan, your two uncles, Rupa and Sanatan Goswamis are there, you should be under their guidance and shelter. If you'll do this, you'll attain all perfection. So then, though Jiva Goswami's heart was broken that he had to leave Nityananda and Navadita, but he set out and went to Kashi. Now a question comes, why did he have to go and study under the great scholar in Banares, Kashi? Madhusudan Pachaspati. The reason is this. Various Acharyas of the four Sampradayas, Madhva Acharya, Ramanuja Acharya, Vishnu Swami and Nimbarka Acharya, have written commentary on Vedanta Sutra. But what is the explanation of Vedanta given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Mahaprabhu has not written any books. We only have Shikshastakam, Chaitanya Parpanamarjanam, to Asishava Padartam Padashtumam, eight verses from Mahaprabhu, and we can also include Nahambi, Prona, Chanarpati, the Bhutchudi Mantra. So, Mahaprabhu has not written any books on Vedanta. So, who will know exactly, precisely, and for, in, for certain, what is Mahaprabhu's explanation of Vedanta? Hmm? So, when Mahaprabhu spoke the, his explanation of Vedanta Sutra to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya for seven days and nights, continuously in Jagannath Puri, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's disciple was there, and it was Madhusudan Vachaspati. So he also had heard Mahaprabhu's explanation of Vedanta. Afterwards, Mahaprabhu had sent him go to Banaras and teach there because it's full of scholars of Vedanta. So now Jiva Goswami was going there to learn from the person who has learned from the, the disciple of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya who was instructed directly by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So Jiva Goswami went there and studied for some time. And then from there, Sila Jiva Goswami came to Vrindavan and he received Diksha, initiation, from his uncle, Sila Rupa Goswami. Sila Rupa Goswami, he is the guru of our whole Sampradaya. We have Rupanuga Gaudiya Prabhupada. But Sila Rupa Goswami has only one Diksha disciple. And that was Jiva Goswami. So there, in what is now the compound of the Radha Damodar temple, Rupa Goswami was writing his books, Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu, Uchala Nilamani, Lalit Madhav, Vidakta Madhav, Dangali, Komadi, and Stavamala, and so many beautiful texts. And Jiva was there, and Rupa Goswami asked him, you can be the editor. So you should read, proofread everything, check everything, and then it can be copied. In those days, publishing means copying manuscripts. So every day, Jiva Goswami was bowing down at the feet of Rupa Goswami, washing his lotus feet. There's a place in the Radha Damara temple, which is the place where Jiva Goswami used to wash the lotus feet of Rupa Goswami every day and drink the China Amrita. And even today, you can go and take the dust from that place. And in this way, <coughs> He was lovingly serving his Guru and uh, receiving all transcendental inspiration. Actually, Srila Rupa Goswami is the incarnation of the chief of the maidservants of Shimati Radhika in the group of Lalita Saki, that is Rupa Manjiri. 
And Jiva Goswami, his Rupa Mandir is very dearest Saki Vilas Mandir. But in this world, they play the role of guru and disciple of sadhakas uh, to show us the path of pure bhakti. One day, a very famous and powerful Acharya named Vallabha Bhakta came to Vrindavan. And he visited Rupa Goswami. They knew each other because they had met previously, both in Aral Gaon, near Prayag and in Jagannath Puri. See, Vallabha Bhakta said, Oh, Rupa, what are you writing? Hmm? He said, oh, I am writing Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. But can I have a look? Yes, of course. If there's any mistake, you can correct it. So Rupa Goswami, out of humility, said, if there's any mistake, please correct it. So then, hmm, Vallabha Bhatta looked at him. He was reading for some time. He said, hmm, yes, yes, I will, uh, I will tell you. But whatever needs to be uh, corrected. So then, Jiva Goswami heard this. What is he saying? He's saying, my Gurudev has made some mistake. This is not good. So then, Vallabha Bhatta, he went to take bath in the Jamuna, and young Jiva Goswami, on the pretext of taking a clay pot to collect some water for his Gurudev, went there, and on the bank of the river, he confronted him. He said, what did you see that you were correct in the writings of my Gurudev? He said, he has written this verse. Bhukti mukti spriya yavat pisici rinivaltate. That Mukti Devi, the goddess of liberation, she's a pisach, she's a witch. But there are many saints, there are many sadhus who are doing meditation and austerities to attain Mukti. How can he call Mukti Devi a witch? Jiva said, he did not say that Mukti Devi is a witch. Mukti Mukti Spriya Yavat Pisachi Ridivartate. He said, as long as the witch of the desire for sense gratification or the desire for liberation, Nirvana, Mukti is there in the heart, as long as that is there, then Shuddha Bhakti, pure devotion, can never enter into the heart of that person. When Vallabhachari was corrected in this way, he's also a humble and a great Vaishnava. He was very happy. And he, after taking bath, he went back to Rupa Goswami. He didn't say anything. He said, you know, your disciple is very learned and very qualified. And he glorified Jiva. But when Rupa Goswami heard him glorifying Jiva, then Rupa Goswami understood. Afterwards, he said, he told in front of Balabhati, Oh, you have done wrong. You cannot keep your calm and cool head. Why are you not respectful to a very senior and learned Acharya and scholar? So he did this to make sure that Balabhati would not feel pinched in his heart in any way. Just see the behavior of the pure Vaishnavas. Hmm? And then afterwards he told Jiva, you should leave Brindavan. Go. Because that person who takes pleasure in humiliating others, or that person who wants to assert his own self-worth, has no place in transcendental Brindavan. And you cannot stay calm, you should leave Brindavan. So then Jiva Goswami was broken hearted and he left him from Vrindavan, he went north and came to the bank of the river just north of Vrindavan. There is a place there called Nandaghat. And there at Nandaghat, we go there sometimes on Prajmanda Purnu also. So there at Nandaghat, there was a, a hole in the bank of the river where a crocodile used to live. But the crocodile had left and Jiva went there and he was living in that crocodile hole. He was not eating, he was not sleeping, he was just crying all the time. Oh Gurudev, oh Gurudev, Gurudev Kripa Bindu Diya Kolo Eida Se Trina Peksha Atina Gurudev
by which I can become more humble than a blade of grass. When I examine myself, I see that I have no good qualities at all. Therefore, O Gurudev, your mercy is essential to me. If you will not give your mercy to me, I will weep and weep. And prana I will give up my prana. In this way, Jiva Goswami was crying day and night. The local residents, bridge bus is there. They saw this young sadhu. Hmm? Srila Sanatran Goswami Pad used to do parakrama, wandering from forest to forest. And he came there. Some bridge bus, some villages told him, Oh, Bada Baba? They call him the, the big Baba. He's the most senior of the Goswami. Oh, Bada Baba? We always used to think that you are very renounced. But now there's one new young Baba staying here. Chota Baba. And this Chota Baba, he's more renounced even than you. He does not eat or sleep at all. He's crying all the time, chanting all the time. Hmm? So Goswami said, really? You show me. Now, Jiva Goswami had become very sick. And he could hardly move. Even he was very sick. So Sanatana Goswami went there and saw the condition of Jiva Goswami. And his heart melted. So he picked up Jiva Goswami. And he brought him back to Vrindavan. Hmm? And he kept him in one place. Then he went to Seva Kunj. And there, Rupa Goswami was giving in the Bhagavad part, speaking about Sri Bhagavad. Sri Goswami is the guru of Rupa Goswami. He came there and he said, Hey Rup, I think that you are giving a very learned discourse, but you have forgotten the teachings, the main teachings of our Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? Rupa Goswami said, What? What have I forgotten? He said, What are the teachings of Mahaprabhu? Rupa Goswami said, first, Name Ruchi. One should develop taste in chanting the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare, 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 Hare. Then, our Lord Mahaprabhu's next teaching, Jiva Doya, to give mercy to all the living entities. So Nam Goswami said, this, this is you have forgotten. Jiva Doya, to give mercy to Jiva. <laughs> so then Srila Sarami Goswami bought Jiva Goswami and when Rupa Goswami saw his disciple in such a pitiful condition, very very ill, then Rupa Goswami was bathing him and giving him medicine and feeding him, serving him and nourishing him with his own hands until he came back to health again. So here, just see. Today is the appearance of Gaudabhaman Dev and also the appearance of Jiva Goswami. There's a connection. Hmm? Because Balinaj did not do anything wrong. But Lord Bhaman Dev punished him. But then rewarded him. When he saw that he could not be provoked in any way. So in the same way, did Jiva Goswami do anything wrong? No. Why? Because it is the duty of the disciple to uphold the dignity and the fame of their Gurudev. Ebi Asha Gushu Tribu Bana. Ebi Asha Gushu Tribu Bana. Srila Narthanga starts to oh Gurudev, may your fame be spread throughout the three worlds. So Srila Jiva Goswami has done the right thing to uphold the dignity, the reputation of his spiritual master. So did Rupa Goswami do the wrong thing by chastising him? No, Rupa Goswami has not done wrong because it is the prerogative of the Guru to give the shasan, discipline to the shishya. Disciple in Sanskrit is the shishya. And so shasan, to give discipline to the disciple. Hmm? It is the prerogative of Guru and if the Guru can give some chastisement to the disciple if he does wrong and if the disciple doesn't do wrong he can still chastise him. Why? Because false ego is there. And there's one thing that the false ego cannot tolerate. If someone corrects you for doing wrong, very often people cannot tolerate being corrected even when they do wrong, to be honest. 
But if someone has not done wrong and they become chastised for doing something wrong, then the false ego explodes like atom bomb. Oh, this is so wrong, this is so bad. So sometimes the Guru will chastise a disciple when he's even not done anything wrong to, to purify him of the last traces of a hunker, ego. So, of course, Jiva Goswami is a pure devotee, but this pastime is there to teach us. So, Srila Jiva Goswami did nothing wrong, Srila Rupa Goswami did nothing wrong. But Srila Jiva Goswami did not uh, go against his spiritual master for this apparently unfair treatment. And by this, he won the heart of Rupa Goswami. Hmm? And this is why, when he was in that cave, Hmm? Then he was writing on palm leaves. And what did he begin to write? Gopal Champu. In other words, in those days where outwardly he was rejected by his guru, but really he was not rejected. He was burning in separation from Rupa Goswami. Oh, Guru Dev, please give your mercy to me. And the mercy of Sri Rupa Goswami came in the heart of Jiva Goswami. And he realized all the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, and that he has written down in Gopal Champu. So, Srila Jiva Goswami is the most prolific of all the Goswamis. Perhaps you know that Srila Vyasadeva has written the Mahabharat. The Mahabharat has 100,000 verses. You can put the Iliad and the Odyssey of Homer inside the Mahabharat seven times. It is such a vast epic. Hmm? But Srila Jiva Goswami has written 400,000 verses. Hmm? Four times the size of the Mahabharat Srila Jiva Goswami has written. By the mercy of his Guru, he was relishing Srimad Bhagavatam so much. He wrote a commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam explaining the Praman Tattva, the Sambandha Gyan, that is called Tattva Sandarbha. Then he wrote another commentary explaining the Bhagavad Tattva called Bhagavad Sandarbha. Then he wrote another commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam explaining about the Paramatma, Paramatma Sandarbha. Then he wrote another commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam explaining Krishna Tattva, Krishna Sandarbha. Then he wrote another commentary on each of those four commentaries called Sarva Sambhadini. Eight commentaries on Srimad Bhagavatam. He wrote Bhakti Sandarbha. Nine. Then he wrote Priti Sandarbha explaining the praying expressed by all the various devotees in Srimad Bhagavatam, especially the gopis of Vrindavan and Srimati Radhika. Hmm? Then he wrote Kram Sandarbha, which is a commentary verse by verse on Srimad Bhagavatam. And then he wrote Gopal Champu, which is another uh, combination of prose and poetry, expanding and unpacking all the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. Tenth canto only, the pastimes of Sri Krishna in a wonderful way. So he had so much taste in Srimad Bhagavatam, he could not stop writing, 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 writing again and again and again, always new, always fresh. Hmm? When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took initiation in Gaya and he came back to Navadvip, now he was no longer Nimai Pandit, now he was Bhavuk Nimai, Rasik Nimai. And when he came in his Sanskrit school, he could no longer explain Sanskrit grammar according to Panini. Hmm? But rather he was explaining every letter signifies Krishna, every grammatical rule signifies Krishna. So by the inspiration of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Jiva Goswami wrote Mahaprabhu's own explanation of Sanskrit grammar that is called Sri Harinam Amrita Vyakaranam. It's very beautiful. Hmm? Jiva Goswami himself said that studying Sanskrit grammar is like going through a dry desert with no water. Very difficult and, and no taste. Therefore, I have composed this Harinam Amrita Vyakaranam how you could learn Sanskrit grammar by chanting the holy names. So he, by this, Srila Jiva Goswami has done a great service to the Vaishnava world. Narayanad Bhutto Yam Banakramaha. We can go into this. On another day, we can discuss the Harinam Very beautiful. So also, he wrote 
the poem, Sankalpa Kalpa Dhamma, and commentaries on Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, called the Durgam Sangamani Tika. And he wrote a commentary on Ujjwal Nilamani called Lochan Urchani Tika. And he also wrote a commentary on Brahma Samhita. So Srila Jiva Goswami is the most prolific of all the Gaudiya Goswamis. Now we come to the next generation. After some time, Rupa Goswami, when Rupa Goswami left this world, Srila Jiva Goswami became the head of the Vishva Vaishnav Raj Sabha. He was the most prominent Vaishnava, Gaudiya Vaishnava in the whole world. So the other gurus, they were sending their Diksha disciples to go and take Shiksha from Jiva Goswami because he was the most learned person. So Gopal Bhakta Goswami sent his disciple Srinivas Acharya to study from Srila Jiva Goswami. So he, um, Rigai Chaitanya sent his disciple Dukhi Krishna, who later became Shamananda Pandit, to study under Jiva Goswami. And Srila Lokanath Das Goswami sent his disciple Srila Naratam Das Thakur to study under Srila Jiva Goswami. So, when Srila Jiva Goswami, most of his writing was complete, he compiled it all together with the writings of Sanatana Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami. And he gave those manuscripts to Naratam, Srinivas and Shamananda and told them, now you should all go preaching. Go to Bengal, Orissa, Manipur and have all these books copied and distributed everywhere. So Srila Jiva Goswami Pad is the uh, root of all transcendental book distribution. Mm. On the way, and of course you know those books were stolen by some customs and excise officers of the king Birhambir. But they were brought back by the great devotion of Srinivas Acharya. And so those books have been spread everywhere and copied and copied and then published and then printed and then translated by Srila Prabhupada into English, French, German, Spanish, Italian, all the languages of the world. And now those books are on the shelves everywhere we see. Transcendental Book Distribution Ki! That is the Brihat Madanga. This Madanga, if you beat it, only people can hear for a few hundred meters. But these books, they are the Brihat Madanga. They go everywhere and when people open them, this Kirtan is recorded and coming out from the book. So Prabhupada Bhakti Sansatako called the book printing, the printing of books, Brihat Madanga. And it should be beaten and that means those books should be distributed everywhere for the benefit of the world. So then in, in the year 1596, our Srila Jiva Goswami part became unmanifest from this world and entered into the Nintilila of Radha Krishna to serve them eternally in his Turupa Vilas Manjri. Shri Vilas Manjri ki ja, Shila Jiva Goswami Pad ki ja, Tidhiya Abhibhav Titi Mahamotava ki ja, Tare Gaur Premanande, Hari 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 H